Right now we're going to explore some basics of input and output and uh, some of the things that we need to understand from that. So we'll go ahead and put in a comment at the very top and say this is a file exploring input and output in Python. And we'll go ahead and save that and I'll go ahead and save it as um, input dot py on my desktop. Alright, so we'll be able to run this later. Notice that it changed color, so that's good. Alright, so there are two different ways that you can enter an input, two primary ways that you enter input in Python. The first is input. So we'll go ahead and define a variable and call it input open close parenthesis. And then we'll do the second one, we'll call that b is raw input, open close parenthesis. Now the difference between these two will become apparent in a moment, but essentially uh, input will try to evaluate what's, all, what's given to it. Uh, in other words, it likes things like numbers and uh, quantifiable things. Uh, raw input will just take whatever you give it and it'll store it as a string. So even if I give it a number like 25, it will store that number as a string data type rather than an integer data type. So that means that we wouldn't be able to actually perform computations with it. We would first have to convert it from a string into an integer in order to perform the computation. So that is kind of the main difference between input and raw input. So let's go ahead and explore some of these features here. Uh, why don't we say, so we're going to ask A is input something, and we can say, um, let's do A times, let's set another variable and call this times, and we'll say A times 5, and then we'll say print times. Alright, and then for B is raw input, why don't we say, um, name equals b plus uh, it, space is my name. And you may have noticed I used one instead of a double quotation. Uh, as a reminder, to just be consistent with either single or double quotations. They work the same as long as you use the same for your beginning and ending uh, string. So let's go ahead and save this and why don't we go ahead and run it in the terminal. So we'll go ahead and look at where we are. Okay, and we'll change directory onto the desktop. And we'll see what's on the desktop, and we have this input.py. So we'll go ahead and do Python input.py. And that will run our code. Okay, so now it's waiting for us to actually enter something in. So we could try to enter in a number like 25. And now it'll print 125. 25 times 5 is 125, which is what we asked it to do in our code. So that's good. Um, now it's waiting for us again. It was what we used for another kind of input, and let's say that this is our name, so I'll go ahead and type in my name, Derek. And notice it didn't print anything, because we didn't tell it to print anything. So, the ultimate result that we get is a variable that has our name stored, like B plus Derek is my name, so, so it would turn out to be Derek is my name, uh, but we didn't ask it to print, and everything else computed that way. Let's go ahead and explore what happens when we don't follow the rules. So let's go ahead and get into Python mode on our terminal. And remember that uh, when you're in Python mode, it will have the three little uh, greater than signs. So in order to quit, we would type in quit, open close parenthesis. All right. So in Python mode, let's go ahead and do the exact same thing that we wanted to do. Input, open, close, parenthesis. So now Python is waiting for us to give it something. Why don't we give it something unruly like a string of characters? 
So let's say it's my name. Oops, I thought it was my name. Oh, there's a problem. So input will not recognize string characters. Uh, it doesn't do well with that. Um, so notice if I put it in uh, quotation marks, it will recognize it. So it did an initial evaluation and said, okay, we think that um, we're, we're going to assume that Derek is some sort of a variable or something else. Um, but since you didn't put quotations, you know, we have no idea what this is. When we put quotations, we told input, okay, this is a string, you can treat it as a string, and so it said, ah, okay, now I know what Derek is, or now I know what A is, A is a string with the value assigned to it as Derek. Uh, let's go ahead and try something else with raw input. So it's waiting for something, so I've got, you know, 25. I could literally type in anything, and it'll do whatever I tell it to do. However, now let's try to do b plus 23. And let's just see, let's say, we'll do c as a variable equals b plus 23. Uh, but it has a problem. It's thinking that this is concatenating instead of addition, which you would do in a mathematical sense. So we remember, we can concatenate things. Uh, so we could do b plus is my name, like we were doing in our code. And look, it would say 25 is my name, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But this is kind of giving you a feel for the difference between input and raw input. So whenever you're coding things uh, into Python, whenever you're going to ask yourself for input, make sure that you have the different kinds of input aligned. It has to do with data types, so make sure that your data types are right and that the input that you give it is valid. Uh, also make sure that you're checking for errors so that in case you enter the wrong input, that things will be okay. Um, let's go ahead and go back to the code because there's one other neat feature uh, notice that when we were, when Python prompted us to enter something in, it didn't really display anything on the screen, it just waited. And so we were like, uh, I don't know exactly what to enter in, I forgot. So you could say, right before the input, you could say print enter a number. And so then we could enter a number. Or, another fancy, this is the equivalent thing to do, is inside the parentheses of input, uh, what's really nice about it is we could actually say something that we want the computer to prompt us when it's going to ask us for something. So we could say, give me a number. And then with a little space, because it's going to be very literal, and if you don't give it that space, then, um, then you'll kind of see what happens. In fact, I'll show you what happens when you don't give it the space. And down here, we could say... Uh, what is your name? This time we will give it a space so you can see the difference and we'll go ahead and add in print name. So we'll save this, we'll go back to our terminal and we'll go ahead and run python input.py. So now notice it's asking me, give me a number. So it's prompted us in case we've forgotten what we we're going to ask ourselves in the first place. Okay, so it's saying, oh, the computer wants a number, so we can give it a number. Now notice, because I didn't have a space, oops, because I didn't have a space, it kind of looks a little messy right here. Uh, but we'll know that that changes in the name one, where we did give it a space. So what is your name? My name is Derek. And it says, Derek is my name. Notice when it prompted me for my name, it had a nice little space, because we added a space there. Um, so make sure that things are clean and crisp and that your inputs are correct uh, so that it can give you the right output.